Yeah, it's so nice to be here and, and uh, to be part of your 10-year anniversary. Uh, we come here from, with uh, part of my team from Stockholm Karolinska and we also have our 10-year anniversary next month for the research center where we are based and where our OCD and related disorder clinic uh, is. So as regards to what happened 10 years ago in Sweden, we didn't have much to offer for young people with BDD 10 years ago, but now we have treated and seen hundreds of families uh, together with, with our sister clinic here in Maudsley. And uh, as you know, Sweden is I mean, twice the size of UK, but not many Swedes. So we are spread out all over the country. So internet delivered treatment has been a thing in Sweden for two to three decades. And, and now, as Dr. Wilhelm mentioned, uh, we have done work on adult BDD and now it has also come to adolescent BDD. And that's what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about the background. We had a fantastic presentation this morning about what BDD is uh, and, and also why we need uh, internet-based CBT or some technical uh, enhancement in our treatment to reach as many as possible. Because we, we have the evidence to believe that we can help most with cognitive behavior therapy. And we also think that if we find people early, we can prevent uh, long-term adverse consequences of BDD. But as we heard this morning, not everyone, far from everyone, get access to treatment. And that is where ICBT comes in. And the idea with ICBT is that it's similar to a self-help uh, intervention, but you take the same treatment content as the best treatment you have available and just put it in an, another format, you know, deliver it through uh, an online platform. Uh, and then you have a trained therapist, in this case it was me, uh, who worked with the program that, that provides support for the families uh, via text messaging. They can uh, send an e uh, email or text to me and, and, and I replay within two days. And it's been uh, around for a long time uh, and have quite a strong evidence base for both somatic and mental health disorders for the last 20-25 uh, years. Uh, and it, managed to overcome these uh, obstacles that Dr. Wilhelm uh, mentioned this morning. And the aim of this study was to take an existing evidence-based program for adolescent PDD and transfer it to an online version with, with uh, therapy support. And the primary uh, uh, aim was to assess feasibility, to see is this working, uh, does the families uh, accept this and is it safe and credible, but we also wanted to look at efficacy, does it uh, reduce symptoms of BDD. And of course the eventual aim is to increase availability of, of evidence-based treatment for young people with BDD. And we tried to recruit uh, uh, young people from the age of 12 up to 17, and basically they had to have a diagnosis of BDD and be able to communicate in Swedish. Uh, we tried to have as few exclusion criteria as possible, uh, so you could have other diagnoses, uh, but not severe conditions that could interfere with treatment, such as really severe anorexia or, or uh, severe psychosis. Uh, you could not have another similar BDD treatment during the past year, and if you were on medication, it had to be stable for at least six weeks. Uh, and we interviewed them uh, at baseline and then followed them quite uh, uh, tightly during one full year after end of treatment. And as mentioned, we, we wanted to, to measure feasibility of this type of, of intervention uh, and also monitor adverse events. But then we wanted to look at how effective it is to, to improve symptoms. And both BDD symptoms with this BDD Y box that was mentioned this morning, but also self rated symptoms of uh, BDD and measures of depression, uh, everyday functioning, and so on. And then we do a lot of statistics. I won't go into that now. Uh, and this is based on the one and so far only randomized control trial for, for young people with BDD, which also has its 10 years anniversary now, I think. It was conducted here in London uh, by our research team 10, 10 years ago. Uh, and in that one, they recruited 30 individuals, 15 of them got CBT. And uh, 
you see the slope here. Uh, Dr. Wilhelm mentioned BDD Y box, which is the gold standard measure, and a, a number of 37 on that measure means really, really severe BDD. So this was a severe group, uh, and uh, at time for the 12-month follow-up, about half of them was classified as responders. So we see a positive trend, but not everyone was helped, but they were a severe group. And then we took this treatment and we have th since 2015 treated all the, the, the young people that we have met at our two clinics with this CBT treatment and, and now uh, did a naturalistic uh, evaluation uh, w where we could include 140 young people. And we saw a similar development in, in, in how the uh, in symptom reduction. A slightly less severe sample, but still about 30. So, so it's quite severe BDD. Uh, and at the end of the one year follow up, we saw that more than 80% were uh, assessed as the responders. So, additional uh, a sign of that we think that CBT, which is adapted for young people, seem to, to, to work and be efficient when, when treating. BDD. And then the third step was to take this program and put it in, in another uh, format, an online format. So we don't change the content, we try to keep the content that seemed to work and, and, and deliver it online. Uh, the same amount of time that was mentioned this morning, uh, 12 uh, weeks, no, 12 modules over 12 weeks. Uh, it could be uh, longer if it was over Christmas, for example. And then the families have uh, separate logins in the treatment platform, and then they have uh, interaction with me as a therapist where they can answer questions in the platform or write text messages to me, which I uh, reply within two days. And since we know that this is a, a group of young people that could have suicidal ideation, uh, we had safety procedures built into the platform they uh, replied to to self-rated uh, questionnaires on depression regularly during treatment. And if it was elevated uh, levels of, of these measures, a flag was raised in the system and I could call the family and see if they needed further assistance. Uh, and if you log into the platform, it looks like this. It's quite a minimalistic Swedish design. Uh, you, you can click on different links here and first of all you read about uh, how it is, this is the first part of psychoeducation, read about how it is to live with this disorder and, and uh, if you're a young person and don't have the energy to read as much we have tried to make all the content available in short video films with me as a talking head explain the, the most important parts of the content and we had these nice little videos where a pa pen, a hand with a pen draws uh, functional analysis and stuff like that. Uh, so we start as you usually do in CBT with, with psychoeducation and treatment planning and then the core component of this treatment is exposure and response prevention which I assume that most of you are familiar with uh, uh, and uh, you also have information on, on, on social media and, and uh, how that can affect the disorder. Uh, we also have uh, modules on effects for uh, school and family accommodation and information on cosmetic procedures and why we think that that normally doesn't work. We also have cognitive uh, techniques incorporated in the program and towards the end we try to encourage uh, the young people to, to uh, drop all their safety behaviors or rituals, what we call full response prevention. And in the end of the treatment, we summarize everything and make a plan for the future. And since we know that many people have low insight, uh, we have tried to integrate motivational work throughout the whole program. Uh, this is quite a messy uh, image. I just want to point out that we recruited 20 participants and it was well balanced between clinical referrals and self-referrals. And clinical referrals are, are uh, individuals that are sent to our clinic from, from other clinics and, and uh, self-referrals are families that contact us directly to be participants in the study. And we followed almost all of them until uh, the 12-month follow-up. And one thing that we sometimes do in internet trials that we have the so-called primary endpoint 
uh, a few months after treatment ended because we see a continuation of improvement after treatment ended. Uh, the participants were 15 and a half years old and they had their BDD for a couple of years be before they started the treatment trial. As it is in most trials in, in BDD, it was mostly uh, females, girls. Uh, about half of them had at least one other diagnosis and, and around 40% uh, were on some kind of medication at the start of treatment. So quite a complex sample. Uh, the insight was better than in many other trials, but still uh, when we asked them if they had plans to do any kind of cosmetic procedure, uh, the majority said that when I turn 18 I will save up money and, and fix my nose or fix my skin or something. So this is a large proportion. And more than a third had some kind of uh, suicidal behavior reported. And for around 40% school attendance was affected. Uh, when it comes to recruitment, we managed to recruit participants in quite a steady pace, around one participant per week. So we saw that these individuals are out there and, and want to have treatment. And it took only around seven minutes per family and week uh, for supporting. And that's a, obviously a lot less than in face-to-face -face CBT. Uh, some additional phone calls, but it's only 15 minutes per family during the whole treatment. So there was not much during the whole course of treatment. They completed, uh, the young person completed around eight and the parents around six, mo six modules. And it's quite normal in internet trials that you don't do everything. Uh, we had one participant that dropped out after a suicide attempt. Uh, and were in need of other services. Uh, everything went well, but that person couldn't continue in the trial. When we monitored adverse events, we had one additional person making a suicide attempt during the one-year follow-up. So that reflects the severity of this group uh, and, and why it's important to monitor uh, this in, in trials and treatments. We had two additional participants that reported self-harm during treatment. The other uh, adverse events were expected and minor. For example, you have more anxiety when you do ERP. So if you look at the slope, you see a similar slope as in the other trials. Uh, a slightly less severe sample, but the, it's a, a significant symptom reduction. And at uh, uh, 12 month follow-up, around 80% are responders and uh, more than 70% are uh, in full or partial, partial remission. So it's a really encouraging, uh, encouraging number uh, since it's an ICBD trial. And if you compare it to the other uh, trials, the clinic data showed a similar slope, but a slightly more severe sample, and the original RCT, even more severe sample, but a similar slope. So we see this is, is suggesting that this treatment seems to work, and also this is an illustration of the stepped care idea of treatment, that, uh, that some individuals may benefit enough of this internet-based treatment and some will need a higher intensity uh, intervention. Uh, and it was encouraging to see that uh, there was a similar uh, improvement on, on depression and functional impairment and, and uh, also insight. And school attendance went up and this also I think was really important and when we asked them again three months after treatment only uh, a couple of participants said that they still had plans to, to do something, a uh, cosmetic, cosmetic procedure. Uh, so to sum up, we think that this shows that ICBT is uh, a both safe and feasible intervention and, and we saw uh, a significant decline in, in symptoms uh, and we saw improvement on, on our additional measures on depression and functional impairment. They didn't want to do cosmetic procedures anymore, and therapist time was only around eight minutes per family a week. And we saw a continuation of improvement up to the 12 months after treatment. So now we plan a fully powered uh, randomized control trial. Our ambition is to recruit 154 uh, young people with BDD, which probably will make this the largest trial in, in the field of BDD so far. And with this, we hope that this can increase availability of evidence-based treatment for young people with, with BDD. So I want to thank my KI research team and also the clinic where I work and the amazing London collaborators. 
uh, uh, which is more than just these two, but, and you, the audience and the foundation. Thank you so much for listening.